It may well be the way of humanity to steer clear of certain subjects it finds too difficult to confront, and consequently ways are found to rationalise or avoid any direct confrontation with them. The use of word spin and obtuse labelling gives us the ability to appease our conscience in not directly addressing difficult topics. They become forbidden subjects, such as the subject of sin. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practised deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. In the third chapter of Romans, Paul goes to great lengths to make the point that sin is the basic nature of humanity, and we are faced with the age-old debate. Are human beings basically good, but sometimes do bad things? Or are they basically bad, and sometimes do good things? Paul comes to the conclusion that the latter is true. No one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise, no one is seeking God all have turned away and become useless. No one does good, not a single one. The writer of our opening song nails it when he writes, All have need of God's salvation, if with him they live forever. Here, 21st century humanity is faced with an enormous dilemma, for it basically believes that humanity is good, but sometimes does wrong things it doesn't really want to confront the reality of basic human wickedness. For if it does, it must in all honesty then look for a solution. Herein lies our current quandary. Humanity today does not really recognise its own sinfulness and consequently the message of God's salvation is totally irrelevant. This is the great dilemma confronting the 21st century church. And perhaps the church's reticence to call sin for what it is, is one of the contributors to the current situation. The songwriter says, We have scorned the truth you gave us. We have bowed to other gods.
Fifty years ago, most people would have accepted the fact that humanity is sinful. However, today we live in a no-fault society that is reticent to acknowledge the basic sinful nature of humanity, and all sorts of justifications are put forward for wrong behaviour, and there is an unwillingness to face up to the basic nature of the human being. How did Jesus see the basic nature of humanity? In the 8th chapter of John's Gospel, we have the narrative of the woman caught in adultery brought before Jesus. Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? What sayest thou? He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. thine accusers. Hath no man condemned thee? In his discussion with the Jewish leaders, Jesus comes to the same conclusion as Paul when he says, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Jesus was in no doubt that human nature was basically sinful, and he could provide the only remedy for that situation. It may well be possible through education and law enforcement to improve human behaviour. And society may well delude itself into thinking that one day it can achieve a human utopia. But the reality of human history is that sooner or later, wickedness will rear its ugly head and humanity will repeat the tragedy of the Holocaust. In the early 20th century, there were few countries more civilised than Germany. Yet despite this, it perpetrated one of the most horrendous and barbaric acts of modern history. Often the struggle of humanity with its sinful nature is an inner sense that somehow we must significantly contribute to our own redemption, that in some way my right standing before God depends on what I can achieve and contribute, and in the final analysis that comes down to pride.
The human remedy for dealing with the wickedness of humanity is to design laws and impose penalties which it hopes will improve human behaviour. The problem with this is, although you may alter the exterior performance of a person, it is highly unlikely that you can change the heart or the mindset. And probably the end result is that sooner or later they simply slip back into their wickedness. The natural reaction of decent people is to try and put right that which they have done wrong. We look for a process that will enable us to personally rectify the wrongs we have done. Such inclinations are a natural human reaction for decent individuals. The same carries through to our standing with God. We want to rectify and make amends for the sins we commit. The reality is that there is nothing we can humanly do to absolve our sin. However, that doesn't stop us trying to find human processes that will make us feel that somehow we can put it all right. In the final analysis, our first step is to confront our own sin and sinful attitudes. If humanity is to progress to a better world, it must without compromise confront the basic disease that consistently infects its existence, and it is called sin. The heart and mindset of the individual has to be transformed by a power that is beyond human origin. It is only in the power that flows from the resurrected Jesus Christ that the individual can find the resource necessary to implement such a dramatic and dynamic change. Hate at last must yield to Jesus, sinfulness before him flee. Through his name shall truth and justice reign again and make men free. It may well be that our society stands on the precipice of blatant unbelief and will go on excusing and rationalising sinful behaviour. The Christian must hold fast and be unafraid to stand by the belief that all humanity is basically sinful.
It is only in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that humanity can find a solution to its basic sinfulness. It is only as an individual surrenders their life in totality that mindsets and ingrained sinful behaviour can be addressed and transformed. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation.